Good morning, Pensbury School District. Um, my name is Sandy Kendravy. I am going to be presenting the Google Docs, just a very basic, basic edition for you today. Um, so let's get, before I get started, I just want to tell you a little bit about myself here. Um, I have been an elementary school teacher in Pensbury since 2006. I um, most recently am the elementary educational technology coach since the end of January. So just in the perfect amount of time to get up and running and, and doing these things. So I'm really excited. Um, and also I am a Google certified instructor. If during this presentation while it's live, you um, want to click right there on the link, it will allow you to ask a question during this. I do have my moderators in the background. Um, so they'll be able to do um, any answering of any of the questions, but also at the end, if there are questions, I can answer those as well. And this will be um, included, like you'll be able to see this at a different time as well after the live presentation. Some of the things that I'm going to just focus on today, again, it's very basic for the Google Docs. So we're gonna be talking about renaming a document, the ability to share, um, selecting different text, font, color, size, inserting images, URLs, hyperlinks, um, downloading, and putting it as a PDF, especially for those parents who might not all have a Google Doc. You can put it as a PDF, and I'll talk a little bit more about that as well. Um, also, I will have these resources available for you, too, as you go through. Um, you can always utilize these resources at a later time. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to open up a doc. So you wanna go to your little waffle up here in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. You're gonna click on that, and you're gonna go down to where it says docs. Now there are different ways to use the doc. We could use a blank doc, but there are also templates available. So if you click on the template gallery, um, over here, there's actually a Pensbury School District. There's a whole bunch of different templates that are available for you to use. Otherwise, you can go to the general, and there is a whole bunch of pre-made uh, that Google has done um, that you could use as well if you needed to. But for today, we are actually just going to um, go right into just a blank document. So we'll double click here for the blank doc. One of the first things that you really need to focus on uh, when you open up a doc for the first time is you are going to want to name this document. So in the upper left-hand corner here, it says untitled document and it actually tells you to rename it. So if you click on that, you can delete that out and you can rename your document. So this, for this instance, I might say like fifth grade shirts. Then the next thing that we want to do now that the document is renamed, if I have my grade level partners or if there's anyone that I really want to share this document with them that they have editing access. So if I'm working as a fifth grade teacher and I want to share it with my fifth grade team, uh, for the teachers, if they want to go in and edit, you just come over to this part of your screen and you would click share. And you could just type in their names and that or Dimitri. So I now have all of these different individuals in here. If over here on this side, you can, this will allow them to edit, or I can only allow them to make a comment, or they can just view it. But if I'm collaborating and working with a team, I'm going to want to allow them to be able to edit the document as needed. So this down here as well, it says notify people. If you have this clicked, that will just send them an email saying, hey, um, you are, you know, on this fifth grade shirts document with Sandy Kondravy, you can use this. So normally, if I do do that, I'll just put a note here, um, please feel free to edit. Just so then that way they know they can do that. And then you would hit send. Okay, now what I'm going to do over here, um, is I might actually start by making a title. So over here where it has um, the normal text, 
you would probably just want to click that title. It would make it a very big thing. You can say fifth grade shirts. I highlight it. You have your options over here to, to make it center, to drop it over to the side. So you can just make that center. Actually, just so they're not confused, I'm going to just go and create a whole new document just in case they jump in on us here. Highlight. I'm going to center that. Now, my next line here, if you notice, as soon as I hit enter, it actually goes back down to normal text, um, which just means my text is normal. So, again, there's many different options that you can do with the different fonts. Um, I always suggest a minimum of 12 fonts. Um, just for when you're typing things. Um, so here I might say, please select the best size shirt for your child. You give them kind of a, a little direction there. What I may want to do also is if I want to insert a table, I would need to think about how many columns and rows would I need. Um, so for this, I might have, say, small, medium, and large um, to go down here, and maybe the colors. So here, I may put, um, I do small, Medium, large. Again, you can highlight the font. You can then align it so it's centered. While you have it highlighted, you could hit the B for the bold, palette size. You can also change the font in here if you choose to. Over where it says the little letter A, you could sit and use this and actually change the color of the font as well. So you have small, medium, and large. And actually, it's small, like just medium and large. And then over here, I might actually include the colors, like it might be a black shirt, or it could be an orange shirt. You don't necessarily have to center everything. Um, you could if you want to. You can change this and this as well. Okay. And then the parents can select what would be best for their child. If um, you would like to insert, let's say you want to insert an image. There's a couple of ways that you could do this. You could upload the image from the computer. So if you had something saved onto your um, desktop, you could upload it like that from there. You could also search the web. Or you can come out this way as well on the web and just type in um, the free t shirt images. And let's just say this was the shirt that I, you know, thought what our shirt might look like. So if I select the shirt. I can right click. I'm going to go down to copy image address. I'm going to go back in here. I'm going to insert and go to image. And now because I already have the URL because I copied it, I'm going to go to my URL and I'm going to paste it. So there it shows me a copy of it and I can just hit insert. And this shirt is very large in size, as you can see on the paper. So at this point, you want to make sure that you click it so you have the, it's around the blue box. And you can just take it and drag it. 
to whatever size you feel would be best. Again, using the toggle over here, you could center that so it's centered on the page for you so parents could see what it is that they're going to use. The shirt. The next thing you could do is if you wanted to put in a website. So let's just say Perry School District. Let's say I wanted to insert this link in with the parents for the parents on this forum. I would find the website, I highlight it, and then I right click to copy and go back into my document. And I'm going to go back to insert. After I go to insert, I'm going to come down to link. I'm going to click on link. Here is where I can paste the link, but I can also type in here. Enferry School District. And I'll hit apply. So what will happen is once I hit apply, where it says um, the link is actually going to be covered over with Pensbury School District. So it's not like a long URL. And it's a different color, so then that way they know that it's a link and they can easily click and it'll take them right to it. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you as well is let's say this is something that you want to put in your Google Classroom as an, as an attachment or it's something um, on a, a remind or a, to email a parent. If you go up to share and you go down to advanced, right now you are the only person who can see this. So you would change, you would click the change, and you would select anyone with the link. So if you share this link with someone, they can view it. See how it says can view? If you want to share this link and allow people to edit, anyone who has this link can then edit if you select edit or comment. Most of the time when you're sending something, you usually just want to send it so they can view it so they can't make any edits. If you wanted someone to be able to edit this, you would then share it with them and they should have the editing rights, which is in that first part where I showed you how to share it with someone. So anyone with a link, they can view it. So I would click Save. Now it's going to give me a link that I can share. So I could post this into an email to a parent and say, Put and you know, paste the link into the email, and they would be able to access this. But again, they would not be able to edit anything on it, they would only be able to use it to view. Um, again, if you wanted individuals down here to be able to edit, comment, or view, you would then put in their email addresses this way. Again, I would only allow those who you would want to be able to edit to have access to editing rights. Okay, so if you wanted to share this with your parents, you would just right click and copy, and then you would just go paste it in your email. Okay. And the last thing I wanted to share with you is, as I said earlier, sometimes parents don't have the access to Microsoft, um, to, to Google or Microsoft Word. So this is a Google Doc. Um, what I would suggest is you can download this and make it a PDF. So if you go up to where it says file, you would go to file, you would go to download. There are many different options here for you, how you would want to make this. But again, if it's just for a PDF, I would just click PDF. And if you look down here on, this, on the bottom part of your screen, you're going to see it's going to create a PDF for you. So now you have it as a PDF form. Uh, when it's in PDF, unless you have the cami, no one can sit there and um, also make edits to that. But again, as long as it's a link that's viewable, again, they would not be able to do that. Okay, so let's go over and just see, are there any questions about this? Okay, um, we will answer any questions that may have appeared. 
Um, but feel free to reach out to any of us at the EdTech team, and we will help you with anything that you need help with. Thanks so much, guys. Stay safe. We'll see you soon.